well hello there private practice success community Gerda here how are you going I am sitting here on a balcony in Brisbane it is very very hot where I'm at right now it feels like I'm in a bit of an oven um, apparently I hear it's much cooler in the southern states at the moment but here in Brizzy in Queensland it is most certainly feeling like summer so I'll give you a quick look at what I'm looking at so just a lot of forest and bush where I'm sitting here there I'm back and of course I'm here at the Mount Cotton retreat where I normally run my get it done retreats and I'm here I was here yesterday I'm here today and again tomorrow where I'm spending time with my management team at the practice or my ops team as we like to call ourselves so that we can have that vision in our mind of we're in our SWAT clothing right we operations we get in there we do things we fix things we manage we plan we lead we think big we create and we innovate we do so many 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 things now I can see some people are here with me but Facebook is not telling me who you are so please say hi say hello and I don't have my laptop on me so I can't check on the laptop as I would normally do um, yes so we have this image of us in our SWAT, SWAT clothes you know like SWAT S-W-A-T maybe double T <laughs> uh, because we're the ops team hey Tamara how are you good to have you with me here so I'm spending these three days with my ops team uh, we are in total SWAT mode uh, you know reporting in being accountable hot seating we did some hot seats this morning uh, we did some problem solving of those hot seat challenges. We did some planning for the new here. We're going to do some implementation. The guys are actually doing implementation right now as I'm here talking to you. Then uh, we run it, we're even doing some interviews this afternoon. People coming here to be interviewed. So we're like fitting in so much stuff, right? And then we're going to have a, another day tomorrow. So what we're basically doing is we're tying up all the loose ends from from this from 2019 so to speak and by the end of tomorrow hey Martha how are you Martha you know exactly where I'm sitting this is where you sat when you were here at get it done retreat and we did one of your videos yes I'm here on the spot right you just sat in this position with the lovely greenery right so I'm just sitting in a different position same chair I'm sitting in your chair Martha <laughs> how are you going hope you're getting all your PhD stuff completed the finish line is in sight I can't wait to call you Dr. Drury cannot wait yes yeah, so we are here I'm here with Chelsea and everyone um, that you of course know Martha and we're doing a lot of stuff as I was saying tying up all the loose ends of 2019 and then we're gonna compare all the stuff that's on our to-do list for 2019 getting close excellent to the business plan that we have come up for 2020 so yesterday we actually did our 2020 business plan we spent time going through all our achievements for 2019 and I wrote them up as the guys were talking through it and we had like two pages of butcher's paper right that we filled and it was a really interesting exercise right really interesting exercise because once we've gone through all of it written it all down and this was uh, input from my principal psychologist my clinical team leader my admin team leader as well as my accounts person and of course myself what we noticed was something very interesting so I wrote it all down with black pen and then I went back and I circled if there wasn't a word that I that I could circle I, I gave it I classified it basically into the seven secrets of prior practice success and basically the majority of our achievements that we had for 2019 stuff that we think we improved on that we implemented that stuff that's going to contribute to moving the needle of progress of growth and development in our practice and team was around 
team. So the most of the number one stuff that we did this year was all around building our team, working on building team culture, all of that stuff. And the second thing was mindset, mindset amongst all of us within the ops team. And those are probably the two most important things that you can focus on. Now, I always say, and I'm gonna say it again here, that you can't just focus on one or two things, right? You need to focus on all the business functions. But it was really interesting, although there were other stuff also popping up, that I can see that a big focus for us this year was on our team, right? And on working on our mindset as the leaders within the team, all, and also transferring that mindset and building the mindset of our team in order to build them into a place where they feel satisfied, where they have resilience, where our private practice fit, where they can see the vision. We want them in love with our vision that we have for the practice. We want them to see the purpose that they have as part of that process. We want them to feel like they're contributing, they have meaning, all of that stuff, right? Hey, Shireen, how are you? Good to have you here. So that was a big part. So we went through all our achievements and then I asked them all the question and I said, all right, so we've achieved all these amazing things, but if you look back, what is the stuff that really made it hard for you, right? What is the stuff that tripped you up, that held you back, that made you question yourself, that was a barrier to getting this stuff done, right? And, and this is where the link to today's topic comes in, because this is the message that I want to share with you, right? Because we, can, we could have gone and said, you know, amazing, we've achieved all these things on our list, two butcher's papers full of stuff that we've achieved, you know, we've got this, we're pretty awesome, look at all the stuff, we've had one hell of a year, one hell of a productive year, pat yourself on the back, right? And yes, we did all of that, don't get me wrong. But you need to learn from every experience, good, bad, or indifferent, right? You learn from your failures, of course, but you also learn from your successes. Because what I've come to find is this, that the people that end up in private practice are very persistent, uh, very determined. They are hardworking. They know how to hustle. They give their all. And, and although that is a strength and that's such amazing characteristics, it, it can also be your biggest vulnerability, right? It can be your biggest vulnerability. Why? Because it means that you just get in there, head down, bottom up, work, 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 work. And that, of course, puts you at risk of burnout. Okay, it puts you at risk and that's where it becomes your biggest vulnerability. So though we've achieved all these amazing things, we had to go back and go, we know we got there because of the way we work, because of our characteristics. But going forward into 2020, where we've got big visions, right? We want to go, what was hard this year that we now need to change so that next year it is easier. Right, so that next year we can now already plan to go, this is the barriers that I had, this is the challenges, this was the mindset stuff that held me back, right? What was those things? So that we can really step into self-awareness and go, okay, these were the challenges of 2019. A lot of it personal stuff, mindset stuff, you know, fear about doing something, taking a risk and a chance, changing things. What is that stuff that held us back that we want to acknowledge, that we want to problem solve and then go, okay, now going into 2020, you know, stepping up from what we've achieved this year, having identified what is next for us at the practice, what do we want our practice to look like at the end of 2020 and how do we make sure that during the next 12 months, the same challenges, blocks, barriers that made it hard for us to achieve these things, we still achieved it, but the stuff that made it hard, that we are now more aware of it, that we know what it is, we can manage it and overcome it way more easily, and some of it no longer are gonna exist in 2020 because of the changes that we are gonna make. So my message to you is that you cannot just go, oh, thank goodness, Thanks for the love hearts, Martha. I'm glad you, you are finding this of value and it's resonating with you. 
You can't just go to that place of, thank goodness, the year is done, holiday time, I'm gonna relax, chill out, the next year's gonna be 100% different. It's not gonna happen. That's called magic. That's called magical thinking. It doesn't work like that. I know you might be tired. I know you might be worn out. I know you might feel like you're on the brink of burnout and you are just hanging out for the schools to close. Like my kids' schools are closing on Friday. You might just be hanging out for, you know, no more school drop-offs and pickups and having more time or just maybe you've got some holidays booked in. You just can't wait. I totally get that feeling. But going on a holiday isn't going to magically turn 2020 into a year where you're not going to have struggles. Okay, You need to physically go through the process of processing how this year was, what was good, what was bad, you know, uh, what do you need to work on for next year. And you need to identify that stuff that needs to change. Because if it doesn't change, you're going to get at the end of 2020, yes, maybe you are going to get have some wins but you're not gonna be where you're gonna wanna be. You're gonna again be burnt out, again feel exhausted, you know? And it's like, it's this vicious cycle. Do you really wanna continue with that? Uh, I'm so sure a mozzie is eating my foot. <laughs> you know, are you gonna continue with that? I surely hope not. I guess as a business owner and just as a human being, I am of the belief that I want to improve things, right? I want to do better. I want to do better. And next year, I want to grow my business. And I know with growth comes challenges, comes new challenges, which means that current challenges needs to be managed. I can't just expect it to magically no longer be there in 2020 because there's going to be new ones. And if I still need to continue deal with these challenges and I'm adding on new ones, well, I'm not going to make it right. That's a recipe for disaster. So please, please, please make the time to fix that, right? Make the time to fix it. It might be as simple for you as, you know, spending time with yourself, journaling, reflecting on this. Um, I know that some of you guys are booked in to spend some time with me this Friday when I'm doing the 2020 Income Blueprint Planning Session, which is going to run from uh, 11 a.m. Queensland time to around about 2 p.m. It's three hours. It will be recorded where I'm going to take you through some money mindset stuff particularly and also help you plan for your 2020, right? So if you're not in it as yet, I'll put the link in the comments. Um, enroll yourself, even if you can't be there live on Friday, book in a time between now and the end of the year. I'm so glad you're going to be there, Martha, to spend three times with yourself to particularly look at your mindset stuff and really reflect on what in your mindset has been holding you back. But remember guys, mindset is just one aspect of it. But I know for a fact that for us as helpers in the ally health and mental health industry, money mindset is a huge thing. It's a huge thing. So my goal is to at least during that time deal with that part of it because if you can you know, work through, uh, um, you know, something that's really large in your life, holding you back like money mindset. Hey, Robin, good to have you here. And it just frees up your energy to then also deal with the other stuff, right? So we're going to do that. If you're not in it, get there. It's very, very important. But you know what, Ed, you know, be enough for you to just spend that time together. What I can tell you is doing nothing is not going to change anything. The very least that you need to do is have that really, it's, it's almost like, you know, to use clinical language, experiential processing of what your here has been like. Hey, Robin, thanks for the hello. Um, it's an experiential processing exercise that you need to do. And it's always easier if it gets facilitated by somebody else, which is why I'm doing the income blueprint planning day but even if you do it with yourself you need to do it okay maybe you can do it with a colleague or a peer you know you could even do it with your team it's really what I did yesterday with my team right which is why it was so helpful because they need to go through that 
process. Everything I teach and tell you guys, I actually do, right? There's nothing I tell you to do that I don't do for myself. And it's very similar also the process that I go through with my inner circle clients. So I've just been enrolling people into the 2020 inner circle, which of course is my 12 month mentoring and coaching program. Friday afternoon, I actually spent the afternoon with a New South Wales uh, psychology group, private practice owner. Hey, Cassidy. Mum here. She's saying hi, mum. She's actually in, inside doing some social media stuff for me. No worries. Uh, Martha will speak to you soon. Yes, I've got the teenager working for me because grade 12 is done and she's got great social media skills. So that's what she's here doing. Everybody's implementing. So as I was saying, I was doing a session with one of my inner circle people for next year and a lot of it was on what is your current challenges, what is this, and then looking at what is the goals for next year. And by the way, if, if you know that what you need is a significant change in the way that you are doing things or a significant step up in the way that you are doing things, or maybe you've just decided, you know what, um, I realize there's no shortcuts, but I most certainly want to fast track my practice growth and expansion into 2020 then the inner circle is the place to be. There's still, uh, I think at last check, two or three places available. So just reach out, let me know. Um, you know, that's the place where everything changes. I often say that the inner circle is like childbirth, okay? Now, in all transparency, I've not had a natural childbirth with either of my three kids for various reasons. Um, they were all, the first one was an emergency C-section and the other two were planned C-sections. But I can only imagine how hard childbirth will be. Um, and I have a lot of friends that's been through it. And it's like, that is what Inner Circle often is like. It is the rebirthing of your practice from wherever it is now to where you want it to get to, where we really solve all those pain points that is there for you. But that's not the purpose of today's live stream. I just went there because it's in my, in my mind, right? Hey, Kim, how are you? So as the topic for today's live stream says, nothing changes if nothing changes, right? And I truly, my wish for you uh, is that you will reach the end of 2020 not feeling the way you might be feeling now. Not feeling vulnerable, burnt out, isolated, you know, down on yourself, feeling like a failure that you didn't get to do what you wanted to do. And I know that there's a lot of us Okay, in, in this community, in our industry, that even though we've achieved a lot of things, it was such hard work getting there that we've got nothing left at the end of the year. And that's not how it should be. Okay, you wanna have stuff left because you wanna have energy left for your family when you're taking your holidays. And the thing is, unless you change the way you work, unless you have a clear plan, which really is like your compass, your navigation, right? Going into the new here, it's just gonna be exactly the same thing. You can think in your head as often as you like that you're gonna do things differently. If you do not have a flipping plan, it's not gonna happen, right? You need to have a plan. And that's it. That's the secret. All right, so I can't wait to see those of you that will be joining me on Friday for the 2020 Income Blueprint Planning Day. If you're not booked in, get onto it right now. Can't wait to see you there. I'm gonna love and leave you as I go back inside to join everyone. It's probably almost time for lunch. And if you've been here to Mount Cotton with me, you would know that Sue makes the most amazing food. The most amazing food. We had such a fabulous morning tea going in for lunch now. So I'm gonna love and leave you. Remember, as always, all you need to do is say yes to your very own ultimate level five private practice. See you soon, bye.